Today, we're looking at lower WAN buttons. Buttons can do a lot. They can trigger actions, turn on and off devices, call for help, and do much, much more. The huge advantage of lower WAN here is that these devices are completely battery powered and wireless, meaning that they can be placed anywhere with no installation necessary. Just place them on a wall and go, or attach them to the keychain as a personal help button. Thanks to the ThingStack, all of these devices can even be activated in batch in the back end. So the use cases for large scale implementations are pretty crazy here. You could use them in an elderly home and assign one to each person as a personal help button. You could put it on the wall in a factory in order to update a product pipeline. You could open and close doors and much, much more. The possibilities are endless. Today, I'll take a look at seven LoRaWAN buttons and I'll try to compare battery life, size, functionality, and price. I'm looking today at the Milesite WS101, generic node, Mutelcore LoRaWAN panic button, Netvox R312A, Rack Wiznode 4K, and the Tectelic Finch and Robin. So first up, the Milesite WS101. This device is about five centimeters square by two centimeters thick, and it features a push button which registers short, long, and double presses. It has an LED and a buzzer built in, which can be used to alert the presser that the button has been pressed, for example. It comes with a sticky mount, so you can easily attach it to a wall, and it also has a companion app, so you can set it up and change any keys or settings on a smartphone. It's really easy to set up, and it regularly sends uplinks with the battery level, as well as any button presses that have been registered. It comes with one lithium battery installed, and it should last about five years. The Milesite WS101 costs 55 euros. Here's what it looks like to use with the ThingStack. Next, let's look at the versatile generic node. It features mounting brackets, so it can be attached to anything. And it also has temperature, humidity, and accelerometer sensors for additional environment monitoring. For alerting, it has an onboard piezo. And this is a device that actually is designed to cover a lot more use cases than just a button, but it's simple enough to be used as one. The generic node is designed to run on two AA batteries and it should last about two years, but it's also very easy to hook it up to solar or another power source. The generic node costs 69 euros and it's designed to be used with the ThingStack. It's one of the first devices that contains a QR code which you can scan in the ThingStack and then all of the settings for the device will be automatically populated. Here's what it looks like to use the generic node in the thing stack. Next, the Mutelcore LoRa panic button. It's about 10 centimeters square by four centimeters thick at the thickest point. It feels like it would be perfect in an industrial setting mounted on a wall somewhere. It's really, really sturdily made. It comes with either a red or a white LED integrated in the middle, and it has some pretty advanced features in order to alert the presser about what's going on in the back end. So by default, when the button is pressed, it starts to blink, and it will continue to blink until it receives a confirmation from the back end that the press has been registered. Once the confirmation has been registered, then the device beeps. This LoRa panic button is powered by two AA batteries and it should run for about five years on a single set of batteries. It retails for 100 euros. Here's what it looks like to use in the thing stack. Now let's look at the Netbox R312A. It's the smallest of our devices at about six centimeters by three and a half centimeters. And it features a big button on the front and two little buttons on the side. The side buttons are configured for network checking. Pressing one will cause the LED on the front to indicate if the network is reachable. The device can be mounted to a surface via a sticky pad on the back or attached to a keychain. This makes it great for both permanent installations and also as a personal help device. It runs on two replaceable CR2450 watch batteries, and it should run for five years with one uplink per hour. It also sends an uplink warning when the battery voltage drops below 2.4 volts, so you know you need to replace the batteries. If your use case differs a lot, Netbox also has a great online calculator where you can plug in exactly what, how you're going to use it, and, uh, and it will tell you how long the battery should last. 
The Netbox R312A costs about 65 euros. Here's what it looks like to use in the Things deck. Next up, we have the Rack 7201 Wiznode 4K. It's about six centimeters by four centimeters by two centimeters, and it features four buttons, each with an LED integrated. You can also purchase customized stickers for the buttons, so it's really clear to the presser what each button is configured to do. The battery lasts about one year, but it's rechargeable via micro USB, and there's also an LED indicator when the battery voltage drops. Like many of the others, it comes with a 3M pad, which you can use to stick it to a surface, and it's very, very attractively priced at 39 euros. Here's what it looks like to use the Wiznode 4K in the Thing stack. Finally, we have the Tectelic Finch and Robin. The Finch and Robin are indoor and outdoor panic buttons. All the features are the same, but the Robin has additional IP67 waterproof casing and a bigger battery. These devices are designed for loan workers, seniors, or children to carry in order to be able to signal for help. So they're really, really portable, very easy to carry, and they can easily be attached to a person via the belt clip that's integrated in the device. There's also a mounting kit which allows you to attach it to a wall or another surface using the same belt clip. The Finch is about 2.5 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters by 7 centimeters, and the Robin is about 4 centimeters by 3 centimeters by 7 centimeters. The smaller Finch has a very impressive 5 year battery life, but the Robin actually has up to 15 years on a single C cell battery inside it. Both of them have replaceable batteries. The devices are configured on press to uplink their location, which they do by sending the list of all of the BLE signals that are within range. The Finch costs 65 euros, and the Robin doesn't have a suggested MSRP, but if you get in touch with Tectelic, I'm sure that you can order them. Here's what it looks like to use the Tectelic Finch in the Thing stack. If you're looking for a simple alerting solution or to trigger downstream actions, LoRaWAN buttons are a great, simple solution. Thanks to the long range and low power of LoRaWAN, they can be installed in minutes and they're solutions that last years with really, really long battery life. If you're looking for any help finding the right LoRaWAN device or building your own LoRaWAN solution, please get in touch with us via the links in the description below. And finally, thanks to Milesite, Mutelcore, Netbox, Rack, and Dalmatian for providing these samples.